What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going into 1 Kings chapter 4. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us, and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away, and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three, three days later and through his sacrifice has offered you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And so, again, today we're going to be going to First Kings chapter 4. And uh, thank everybody. I want to thank everybody who has been praying for myself, praying for my brother Adam uh, through this car accident we just experienced. It's, uh, you know, he talked to the tow truck driver. He went back to get the stuff out of his car, out of his truck. Uh, and he actually lost a lot. He lost a lot of tools. His whole, he had a cover over the back of his truck. And he had, the whole thing was full of tools. He, he worked construction. And we, we were able to get a lot of the stuff back, but the car was so, uh, the accident was so bad and the car was so crunched. You know, there, there, was a, there were tools like at least 50 feet away. Uh... But we were able to get a lot of back, a lot back, a lot we didn't get back, and I believe a lot of that is uh you know, a lot of the tools were thrown into into the other vehicle that hit us, and towed away. But regardless, we're all right. By the grace of God, and I thank everybody for your prayers. Anybody who's been praying for us, for our injuries, there are minor injuries. He had a he had a concussion. And a bruised hip. I had, uh, you know, some some bumps, bumps and bruises like he had. Uh, and some bruised ribs. And uh, it's truly a miracle that we are still alive. It's a miracle. But the tow, tr tow truck driver that he, uh, that towed his car. He's actually a believer himself. And he, uh, he told my brother Adam... He said, I've seen, I've, I've done this for a long time, and I've seen many accidents half this bad where people died. And we were in a very severe, serious car accident. And we're alive. If you haven't seen the pictures, well, if you have, you know, know what I'm talking about. But let me, I guess I'll just go to it real quick. Just to refresh your minds, or if you haven't seen this before, give me one second. And show you what I'm talking about. And also pray for my family. I just lost my grandfather a couple of days ago. Uh, I do have a grand, I'll say it like this. He was my blood grandfather, who I did know pretty well. But my, but my grandmother's, uh, my grandma's husband, has always been a a good grandfather to me. He's he's always been a more more of a grandfather to me than any other blood grandfather that I've had. And I only have two blood grandfathers and. No, he's been more of a grandfather to me than uh, any other other of the two have. But I still love the other ones. I still love my blood grandfathers. 
my mom's father and my father's father. And it's my father's father who just uh, passed away uh, a couple of days ago. And, you know, his fun funeral is going to be in a couple of days. So pray for my family. Pray for comfort for them. But back to this car accident before we get into the study. This is the truck. I was right here. I was in the passenger seat. Without a seatbelt. It's a miracle that I'm still walking. It's a miracle that I'm alive. One more time. Let me go back to this picture. Look how bad this is. The truck was almost cut in half. I was right there. And basically, the it's a blessing that he had a... He had a window airbag. He had a side airbag. So when we got hit, that went off. And I bounced off the airbag and went right into his, my ribs went right into his middle console, his center console. And that's my worst injury. My ribs being bruised up. You know, I, I got a CT scan because they thought I had a ruptured spleen originally. And even after, I thought I may, may have had uh, fractured ribs because of how bad the pain was. But it's just bruised ribs. And as far as I can tell, over the last day or two, they're healing up. And I'm all right. He's all right. It's a miracle that we're still alive. It was God with us. God delivered us from death. And God has delivered me from death many times. He de he's delivered me from prison many times. And not, not that I'm a, a criminal, or any, criminal or anything. Even though I have done a lot of uh, criminal things in my life. Once I gave my life to Christ, I changed that. But there was a trap, a trap set for me. The same traps that are mentioned in the Psalms, even in Psalm, Psalm 91, the most famous Psalm, at least these days. He delivers you out of the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. The snare of the trapper is, yeah, see, see, most people just read through that and don't, don't know what it means. But most of the Psalms, if not all of them, I would say almost, almost every single psalm it is not only something they sang as songs back then, not only the writings of David back then, but they're prophecies for the times we're living in. And there are many times these traps are mentioned in prophecy. And one was set for me. A couple, oh, about two, I want to say about two years ago. Two years ago now. Tried to set me up for a major crime. They, they tried to frame me. I'm talking about the Illuminati. Which includes. Police. Government. And I'll just leave it at that. But one more time. It's a miracle. That we're still alive. This truck was almost cut in half. We got hit at about 60, 70 miles an hour. Head on. And I'm not going to go into the details of the accident right now, but, you know, just telling you, it's a miracle. It truly is a miracle. And if you want any more of the details, you can go back to some of my previous videos, which spoke about it. But it's truly a miracle. And I've said this, I swear I've said this at least a hundred times since this has happened. There's no other ex explanation except that it's a miracle. Except that God was with us, that he had his angels with us, protecting us. There's even unbelievers. There's even atheists 
who have been coming out saying, God was with you. God protected you. You know, I got checked up. I got checked back up at uh, an urgent care doctor the other day for my ribs because I was going through severe pain. Even though it's just bruise, bruises. And I, you know, he saw the, he saw the car. I showed him the pictures. And he said, he said, you must be a good man because, because God protected you. And he's a Sikh, S-I-H-K, which is actually one of the top five most uh, popular religions these days. It's uh, somewhat like, somewhat like him, Hinduism, but it's a little bit different. One of the top five uh, popular religions right now. He's a Sikh. He, he's a, I mean, I, I don't want to uh, judge him based on how he looks, but I, I believe he's an Indian dude. Maybe he's from, maybe he's not from India. Maybe he's, maybe it's another country, but uh, but he even said, "You must be a good man. God protected you." You know, it's it's truly a miracle. But let's go ahead and get in, into this study. I don't want to want to go through. I don't want to waste too much time. Uh, but it's a it's, it's truly a miracle. It is a miracle. God was with us. He had his angels protecting us. And that's because we have, I mean, because he had mercy on mercy on us and mercy on our families. But God has more for us to do. And so I'm going to try to continue the mission. And uh, we're here in First Kings, First Kings chapter 4. When Solomon just came, came into power. In the last chapter or two. Now King Solomon was king over all Israel. These were his officials. Azariah the son of Zadok was the priest. Azariah was the priest. Son of Zadok. And Zadok is mentioned in uh, Ezekiel 40 through 48. The sons of Zadok will be priests in the kingdom. We're talking, talking about the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. These were his officials. Azariah, the son of Zadok, was a priest. And it, and uh, have mercy on me. I have this phone I'm using. It's all cracked up, so it's, so it's hard to read some of this stuff. Elahorf. And and Ahijah, the son sons of Shisha, were secretaries. Jehoshaphat, the son of Elihud, was the recorder. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the army. And Zadok and Abiathar were priests. So Zadok was still a priest. And his son was priest. And Azariah, the son of Nathan, was over the deputies, and Zabud, the son of Nathan, was a priest. Or Zada, Zabud, the son of Nathan, a priest, was the king's friend. And ah Ahishar was over the household. And Adoniram, the son of Abda, was over the men of forced labor, over the servants. Solomon had 12 deputies over all Israel who provided for the king and for his household. Each man had to provide for a month and a year. These are their names. Ben-Hur in the hill country of Ephraim. Ben-Decker in Machaz. And Shalbim and Beth Shemesh and Eloth or Elon Elon Bath Hanan Ben Hesed and, and Araboth Sukho was his and all the land of Hepha. And that was in parentheses. So, so maybe there was 
not in the original translation, added in. Ben Abinadab, in all the height of Dor, and this also is in parentheses, the next words, Tepeth, the daughter of Solomon, was his wife, the wife of Dor. Bana, the son of Elihud, and Tanak and Megiddo, and all, and all Bethshin, which is beside Zerathan, below Jezreel, from Bethshin to Abel, Mahola, as far as the side of Jachmiam, Ben Geber, and Ramoth, and Ramoth, Ramoth Gilead. In parentheses, the towns of Jair, the son of Manasseh, which are in Gilead, were his. The region of Argob, which is in Bashan, sixty great cities with walls and bronze bars, were his. And so that's added in, apparently, by translate by translators to help you understand. Ahinadab, the son of Edo, and Mahanaim, Ahimaz, and Naphtali. Parentheses. He also married Basemath, the daughter of Solomon, and Banna, the son of Hushai, and Asher, and Beeloth, Jehoshaphat, the son of Parua, and Issachar, Shimei, the son of Elah, and Benjamin, Geber, the son of Uri, in the land of Gilead, the country of Sihon, the king of the Amorites. And of Og, the king of Bashan, and he was the only deputy. He was the only deputy. He was in that land. So there was only one deputy, which was in the land of Sihon and uh, Og. The territories that Israel captured from the Amorites and uh, oh shoot, she want to see this drone. That's what I deal with on the regular. Drones flying over me on the regular. It's actually been a little while since one flew over me, and uh, it's been kind of a quiet night. So that's surprising, but you know, it flew right over. So, uh, not directly over top of me, but over the house that I'm next to, over, over my friend's house. It flew directly over his house. But, uh, and normally it's directly over my house, which is, which is two houses down. But anyway. So one of these uh, commanders, one of these, uh, what, what do they call it? Deputies. Was over the whole land of Og and Bashan. This is uh, the land of Manasseh. This is a modern day land of Jordan, but the, it would be the land of Manasseh and uh, maybe only the land of Manasseh. I would have to look at the map. But anyway, let's continue. Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand that is on the seashore in abundance. They were eating and drinking and rejoicing. Now Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the river to the, to the land of the Philistines, so the Jordan River, from the Jordan River to the land of the Philistines, and to the border of Egypt. They brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Solomon's provision for one day was 30 cores of fine flour and 60 cores of meal. And I looked up that word for cores. <coughs> and a core is according to what I look what I looked up about two hundred and thirty liters. A core is about two hundred and thirty liters. And it says uh Solomon's provisions for one day was thirty cores. Basically two hundred and thirty liters times 30 of, of flour 
and 60 cores, 230 liters times 60 of meal. Or that would be, uh, you know, like cornmeal, uh, grain, crushed up grain, from my understanding. 10 fat oxen, 20 pasture fed, 20 pasture fed oxen, 100 sheep besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fattened, fattened fowl. For he had dominion over everything. Solomon had dominion over everything. And he was the, the wisest king that ever, ever lived, even though he screwed up. He didn't use that wisdom wisdom correctly. And let's see another one of these drones. Even though he screwed up, he was the wisest and likely the richest king to ever live. Everything he had was of gold. The shields of his soldiers were gold. Everything he had was gold. The Bible says silver wasn't even valuable in the, day, in the days of Solomon. Because of how much he had. So one more time. Solomon's, Solomon's provision for one day was 30 cores of fine flour. Which is 230 something liters. Per core. 30 cores of fine flour and 60 cores of mule, 10 fat oxen, 20 pasture, pasture fed oxen, 100 sheep besides the, besides the deer, gazelles, roebucks, and the fattened fowl. For he had dominion over everything. West of the, west of the river, the Jordan River, from Tifsa, even to Gaza. Over all the kings of the west of the river. And he had peace on all sides around him. He was powerful and he had peace. So Judah and Israel lived in safety. Every man under his vine and, and his fig tree. From Dan even to Beersheba. All the days of Solomon. Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots. 40,000 stalls of horses. And 12,000 horsemen. Those deputies provided for King Solomon and all, his, and all who came to King Solomon's table each month. They had left nothing lacking. They also bought brought, bought brought uh, brought brought barley and straw for the horses and swift seeds to the palace or to the place where it should be where where it should be each according to his charge now god gave now god gave solomon wisdom and very great discernment and breadth of mind like the sand that is on the seashore that's what I was, I was just talking about. Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the sons of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. All men. Than Ethan the Ezahite, Heman, Kalko. And these are, I guess these are Israelite wise men. Heman, Kalko, and Darda, the sons of Meho. And his, his fame was known in all the surrounding nations. Or maybe those were, you know, men from foreign nations. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't looked deep into that. His fame was known in all the surrounding nations. He also spoke 3,000 Proverbs. We only have 30 Proverbs in the Bible. And not every single one of them is Solomon's. Solomon has... Tw the, the majority of the Proverbs. But the Bible says here, he spoke 3,000 Proverbs. Only a 
a small portion of them are mentioned in the Bible. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. That's like the Psalms. Solomon wrote, Solomon wrote basically over 1,000 Psalms that weren't recorded here in the Bible. He spoke of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the even to the hyssop that grows on the wall. He spoke also of the animals and the birds and the creeping things and the fish. Men came from all peoples to hear the wisdom of Solomon. From sorry. From all the kings of the earth who had heard who had heard his wisdom. Solomon was so wise he had people from all over, people from all nations coming just to hear his wisdom. And he was more powerful, more, richer than basically any other king that has lived. As I said, we, we see in other scriptures that all the shields of his, of his soldiers were pure gold. All his vessels, everything he ate out of was pure gold. His throne was gold. He had I would have to I would have to look back into it again, but he had six to twelve lions on each side of his throne leading uh, leading up to the steps to, to his throne. Six to twelve lions. At least three on each side. Going up to 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 the throne of Solomon, lions. And silver wasn't even valuable in the, in the days of Solomon because of all all he had. No, it's amazing. It's amazing what God, what God can do. It's amazing how He helps us. And provides for us. Even though none of us watching this are Solomon. Or probably not even close to Solomon. You know, I don't seek riches. Really? I don't seek riches. I don't, I don't seek these earthly riches. And, you know. Let the enemy try to try to disrupt. Let him. Never seen this car before in my life. Let him try to disrupt the video. That's okay. I don't seek the riches. I seek the kingdom of God. I seek the ways of God. And that's what's important. We need to seek God. We need to seek Him with all our heart. We need to be humble and blameless. Let's overcome. Let's walk in the ways of God. He's coming soon. I thank y'all for tuning in. I thank y'all for the prayers. Anybody who's been praying for me and, and uh, Adam and, and my family. With everything that's going on right now. <coughs> no. no, it's a blessing to just be alive. It's truly a blessing to be alive. You know, because I... I don't even know. I, I, I'll just leave it at that. It's a blessing to be alive. It's a blessing that... uh. My brother in faith. My brother from, from another mother. And actually, I met and talked to his mother today. My brother from another mother. It's a blessing that we're alive. I thank God. I praise Him. It's unbelievable. 
that we're still here today. It truly really is. And a whole lot of traffic right now. In this quiet neighborhood. Car after car after car. You know. No, but I've talked about this before. If you watch my videos. This one right here. It makes no sense that you would pull through a school parking lot over here. To turn this way. To come to come up to this street. When you could just come up to this street and turn on this street up here and then turn down here. But instead you pull through a school parking lot. Which is gonna take you like 10 times longer just to pull, that, pull through that parking lot and come up this way and then turn the same same way you would have turned if you would if you would have uh, turned up the street past that church right there. This happens all the time. Makes no sense. But people gotta watch. You know, I'm a target. They gotta watch me. They gotta they gotta come by, surveil me, and you know this happens all the time. And you know, and it's almost every day now that I have somebody coming by, coming somebody riding by in the car that. Points, points at their eye. Either they, they cover their eye or they point at their eye. They ride by and they're just like. See, Illuminati. You don't believe me, I don't care. You know, but they've tried to kill me. They tried to set me up for major crimes. But God is with me. Hallelujah. God is with me. And I'll just uh, show y'all one more thing before I end this video. You know, I may do a concert. As uh, some of y'all know, I do a Christian rap. Check out my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on Facebook, Check it out on YouTube, youtube.com YouTube slash C slash Larry Newport. YouTube.com slash C slash Larry Newport. And there's also another link, but I'll just leave it at that. But, uh, you know, there's a church over here. There's a church right here. I live over here, but two churches close to where I live. But, um, this church over here, and I'll get to what I'm saying in a second, but it's cool. They have a you know a little free fridge. They get a little free fridge. It's a little literally what it's called, and a little free pantry. So you know that's a blessing. You know, helping the needy. But uh. We have the crosses right here. And right right in front of those crosses. Right in front of those crosses. There's a little stage. There's a, there's a little stage over here. And there was actually a... There's actually some, somewhat of a concert over here tonight. I guess it's a... Some local people. Some of them were, were really good. Some of them were really talented. You know, some local bands, some local singers, and stuff like that. I mean, this is a small town. And so, you know, what was going on, on over here earlier, you know, surprised me. You know, there's, uh, there's some people that are pretty good. You know, different type of music. But uh, I would like to do a concert here. And my plan is to do a concert right here in front of these crosses. There's a little stage there. And uh, I think it would be amazing to do a little concert. You know, I have uh, six Christian rap, 
Christian rap projects. And I'm working on the seventh. I actually wrote to... Uh, I wrote some last night. Not any verses, but I wrote some hooks. And, um... Or courses. Whatever you... However you call them. I call them hooks. I wrote some last night, and, uh... Me and my brother Adam over here. My seventh music project is going to be called The Number Seven Part Two. Because it's, it's my seventh. It's going to be called The Number Seven Part Two. Because I already have a project called The Number Seven. The Number Seven Part Two, parentheses, The Mission. And it's going to be uh, me and him. Seven songs. And uh, may God's will be done. But I, I would love to... I would love to uh, do a concert out here. I'm trying to, trying to get it in the background. I'd love to do concert out here, and not trying to take too much of y'all's time. I, you know, I'm, I'm just dragging this video on, but just wanted to say. Got a lot in the works. Would love to do this, Lord willing. If it's according to his will, it'll be done. I have enough songs to do two, three hour concert. But uh may his will be done. Start work start working on some more music, potentially a music video for my song Watching Me. And uh I would love to do uh videos for the for a lot a lot of other songs, but you know. God led me to start with that one. If it's, his, if it's his will, it will be done. And we have to, we have to stay focused on him. We got, we got to be right with God. If we're living in the last days, there's not much time left. I thank y'all for tuning in. I thank y'all for your prayers. Please pray, pray for my family, for their comfort. Pray for the, the continual healing for me and Adam. Pray for the continual healing of my father with the infection that he has. And uh, all I got to say is let's be right with God. Let's be ready for his kingdom. Let's serve God with all our heart, all our strength, and all our soul. There's not much time left. We have to be ready. We really have to be ready. Let's be right with God. Let's serve him with all our heart. That's the end of this video. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. And Shabbat Shalom. You know, this... Uh, well, it is it is a Shabbat. A Sabbath. I said Shabbat Shalom. I said Shabbat Shalom based on the Saturday, which just ended. According... Because I go by the Hebrew calendar. So Sabbath is uh, Friday night to Saturday night. At sundown. But tonight begins the first, the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The last day of Masa. Feast of Masa. And uh Hallelujah. Shout out to all the all my brothers and sisters out there who are uh, celebrating that. But uh thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.